Bajuri Gemarua, Diane Babana Gemarada Nura Gadigal. I pay my respects to the Gadigal people, the traditional custodians, and all the owners of the place we gather this evening. Indeed, it's a great honour as the CEO of Metro, Local Aboriginal Land Council, to open in the words of the Gadigal. Much love and respects forever to Paddy Gareng in gifting Gadigal language to us to continue one of the oldest languages of earth. Those words translate to g'day. Women, men, comrades, friends. We're gathering on Gadigal country this evening. Again, honouring all the Gadigal, starting with their matriarch in Daringa, her offsider, the patriarch, Colby, and acknowledging that the place we gather this evening has always been part of Gadigal country. We connect to a very important place in Gadigal country, the ceremonial ground, or the Eula Bading, the place where our word for ceremony took place. Ironically, of course, that's where the parliament is today, in the Botanic Gardens. So I pay my respects and honours to gathering in such a powerful place that's had gatherings, meetings and ceremony, dare we say, since time memorial. But tonight we're here to celebrate all you deadly fellas. And I mean that. Our people have had a bit of a, a crack at science over the generations. But tonight it's about honouring all of you. I want to honour all the nominees, all in the science fields let alone the respects and love to all the eventual winners tonight. Big love to all the dignitaries for coming along tonight and sharing with all the deadly hard work and scientists. Acknowledging all the contributors, the state and Australian governments, big thank yous for your help. To Ernesto, to Colosinco, to UTS, to Sydney Uni and Abbey's Bookstore. Without all those contributors, dare I say, we mightn't be here this evening. But much love to the Australian Museum, to Miss Mackay and all the team. We as your local land council dearly love what you do here. But tonight it's about celebrating a bigger agenda, all the achievements of science. And for our mob, good on you. I hope you got a $50 note in your wallet. Because if you have, you're lucky enough to see the first preeminent scientist of Australia. He's a Nunga man. He is David Uniapin. See, without David, you wouldn't have been able to shear your sheep. You probably still would have been doing 10 a day if he didn't get a circular motion head on that shearing pin. But more importantly, and for us, he'll always be the man who converted aerodynamics. For we foresee that without birds, without our ability to interpret bird wings, we wouldn't have had boomerangs. And you fellas wouldn't have had planes or helicopters. So we're always thankful and acknowledge David Uniapin, for breaking down our old culture and translating it into modern science. But today, it's all about acknowledging that we've been doing science a long time. Whether it's our old people using deboisia to deoxygenate water so we don't stand around and wait for fish to come. Or whether we've been using eucalyptus or maybe honey as disinfectants since time memorial. Maybe we've been using cobwebs as bandages since the first light lifted from the sky. My old people have been doing things with science all the way. So we stand with you as scientists. We know the world's been a much lesser place, let's just say from maybe 1,000 to about 2,000. We've had a real problem in people not following science, being led by science. They are the doctors, they are the lawmen, they are the leaders in our culture and communities and may we hope that all you deadly scientists can take back your role in projecting the future, addressing the needs of our society and coming up with the solutions. Whether it's vaccines in 2022, wish you had one in 1788. <laughs> but at the same time, it's science who's keeping us alive and helping us to thrive. So two deadly you fellas have a deadly Eureka Awards. I just want to acknowledge, but my daughter's name, Yoroka. In Thangadi, Yoroka means the sunshine, the place of sunshine. So you're not too far off in the adaption of Eureka from Yoroka. Thank you very much.
to the stage, director and CEO of the Australian Museum, Kim McKay AO. Good evening, everyone, our special guests and Eureka Prizes finalists. Welcome all to our wonderful Australian Museum. And thank you, Nathan Moran, for your welcome to country. And uh, I, I loved Nathan's story about early science and encouraging you all to continue surging and forging ahead. Now, this is without doubt the night of nights in the science world, the 32nd annual Australian Museum Eureka Prizes ceremony. I also would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And acknowledge that we're on land that was never ceded and it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Now, after two years of virtual award ceremonies, I'm delighted to welcome you to our stunningly renovated spaces and the Hinsey Hall at the heart of the Australian Museum. In true 2022 style, tonight is also being broadcast live and a very well welcome to those joining us around Australia and from other countries too. This is a special evening on the nation's science calendar. Now, for 32 years, the Eureka Prizes have played a crucial role in honouring excellence and educating the public about the latest advances in science. Today, the Eureka Prizes are the only National Science Awards to bring together our leading scientists, early career researchers, science communicators, and those charged with taking care of the future, our school students. Joining us tonight are so many special guests, so I'd just like to acknowledge a few of those. Firstly, the Honourable Ben Franklin, MLC, New South Wales Minister for the Arts, Aboriginal Affairs, Regional Youth and Tourism. Minister Franklin is also our minister here. It's great to have you with us tonight. The Honourable James Griffin, MP, Minister for the Environment and Heritage here in New South Wales. Thank you for coming. And I'd like to give the apologies of Alastair, Minister Alastair Henchkins, the Minister for Science in New South Wales. I think he's got some budget estimates issues he's dealing with at the moment. Uh, of course, he's Minister for Science in about a thousand other portfolios at the moment too. So he's a busy man, but he's very supportive of the work we do here. It's also my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Cathy Foley AO, PSM, Australia's Chief Scientist. Welcome, Cathy and many other colleagues who are with us tonight from the state and federal government departments who all share a commitment and passion for science. I'd also like to welcome some of my colleagues from the Australian Museum, including the President of the Australian Museum Trust, David Armstrong, the President of the Australian Museum Foundation, Brian Hartzer, as well as Kate Hayward, the Chair of the Australian Museum's Lizard Island Reef Research Foundation. We also have many of our current and former trustees with us, along with members of our executive leadership team. I particularly like to acknowledge a former trust president and the creator of the Eureka Prizes all those years ago, ABC science broadcaster extraordinaire, Robin Williams AO. And I bet Robin, 32 years ago, you never anticipated <laughs> this would be happening. Tonight, we also have an impressive group of senior representatives from universities around the nation. Those, of course, who haven't been redirected to Canberra for the Jobs and Skills Summit tomorrow. From the University of Sydney, Professor Anna Marie Jagos, Provost and Deputy Vice Chancellor, and Professor Emma Johnson AO, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and a dear friend, and Professor Kathy Belov AO, Pro Vice Chancellor and also an Australian Museum trustee. From the University of Technology, Sydney, my alma mater, Professor Kate McGrath, Deputy Vice Chancellor and Vice President of Research. From Macquarie University, Professor Saki Pretorius, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research. From the University of New South Wales, Deputy Vice Chancellors, Professor Eileen Baldry, AO, Professor Nicholas Fisk, AM, and one of my favourites, Professor Merlin Crosley, a former Australian Museum trustee. From RMIT University, Professor Callum Drummond, AO, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research, Innovation and Vice President. And from the University of Adelaide, Interim Pro Vice Chancellor of Research, Professor Laura Parry. From the Australian National University in Canberra, Professor Kieran Kirk, 
Dean in the, of the College of Science at ANU, and from the University of Wollongong, Professor Eileen McLaughlin, Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science, and from the uh, University of Melbourne, Associate Dean, Diversity and Inclusion, Professor Elaine Wong. To you and all your other colleagues who are here tonight, thank you so much for coming along this evening. We also have Eureka Prize partners and program supporters with us. It is thanks to your ongoing support and commitment that the Australian Museum is able to continue these awards and be able to recognise and reward extraordinary science. I'm thrilled to announce that next year we will add two new Eureka Prizes. <laughs> That's a good supporter, I'm happy to write a check. First, the Eureka Prize for Excellence in Research Software to recognise this critical growing area. This prize will be presented by the Australian Research Data Commons, ARDC. Joining us here tonight are their CEO, Rosie Hicks, and Board Chair, Craig Roy. Welcome to you. And the second new Eureka Prize will be for Innovation and Excellence in Botanical Science, presented by the Australian Institute of Botanical Science, on behalf of the Royal Botanic Garden and Domain Trust. Now they are the nation's first scientific body. We are the second. Thank you to Denise Ora, Chief Executive, and your team for your great support, and we're always happy to work and collaborate with you. Also tonight in the audience are many of the 59 judges who lent their expertise and gave hundreds of hours to review the significant volume of entries from every state and territory. I know judging is a big commitment, I've done it in the past, and I sincerely thank you. To steal a line from Hamilton, tonight we're most certainly in the room where it happens. This is it, folks. There is one special guest, Her, Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, ACQC Governor of New South Wales, who is unable to join us in person tonight, but the Governor has recorded a special video message. Good evening to all of you there at the Australian Museum and to the live stream audience joining in from across Australia and around the globe. These are exciting times for science. Earlier this month, it was my pleasure to host a former Eureka Prize winner, Professor Michelle Simmons, at Government House for a presentation on manufacturing at the atomic scale. Besides her infectious enthusiasm for the subject, what struck me was Michelle's description of Australian scientists working at the cusp of major breakthroughs, so significant that they will take the world into new domains of possibility. And Michelle and her dedicated team are not alone, as amply demonstrated by the 45 entries shortlisted for the 14 Australian Museum Prizes to be awarded tonight. Congratulations to each finalist, and thank you for your contribution to science in Australia through excellence in research and innovation, leadership, science engagement, and school science. My thanks also to the Australian Museum and partners in scientific institutions, government organisations and universities and corporations for your ongoing support. As a mere lawyer, can I say to all the scientists tonight, these are exciting times and that's thanks to you. And as I leave you with a toast to science, have a wonderful evening. What a great message from our New South Wales Governor. These are indeed exciting times and challenging times too for science and our world. That's why we need to acknowledge you all and celebrate tonight. And we're here for one main reason, to celebrate the Eureka Prize finalists. The Australian Museum is proud to recognise your achievements at this special event. The impact of your work will inspire the whole community and will be felt for many years to come. Could I ask all finalists who are able to stand or indeed wave, be up standing if you're able and make yourself known. Could I have the house lights so we can see them? Thank you all so much. Thank you for coming. Now, I've been fortunate to be director and CEO of this incredible institution since 2014. And whilst tonight is all about celebrating the Eureka Prize finalists, I do want to take this opportunity to briefly mention 
some of the work happening here at the Australian Museum, now in its 195th year. The AM, AM is committed to being an, an advocate for First Nations cultures and voices. And a year and a half ago, we appointed Whalewin and Trimmer woman, Laura McBride, as Director of First Nations to our leadership team. Laura is leading the work to redefine the relationship between First Nations people and the museum, including projects like the award-winning truth-telling exhibition, Unsettled, and our new learning and play space up on level two, called Bara, the Eel, which combines Western science with First Nations knowledge systems and cultural practices. Thanks to the support of the New South Wales Government, Laura will also be leading a new dedicated repatriation of ancestral remains called Returning Them Home, a key priority for the Australian Museum. And I want to thank both of our ministers here tonight who collaborated to make this possible. Thank you, Minister Franklin and Minister Griffin. Now another key pillar of our work is raising awareness about the current state of the environment through the establishment of the Climate Solutions Centre in order to research and ampl amplify uh, solutions for a better future. At the Australian Museum Research Institute and our Lizard Island Research Station on the Great Barrier Reef, we have more than 100 scientists working on our team. As Australia's first museum, our collection has more than 22 million objects and specimens, the largest collection in the Southern Hemisphere. Museum collections right around Australia and the world represent a vital and valuable part of scientific infrastructure, with our collection now valued at a billion dollars, hence why I don't sleep too much at night. So that collection is well worth preserving and protecting. And now we have a major decade-long collection digitisation program underway with the support of the New South Wales Government. The, this irreplaceable resource provides a unique ability to see, understand and importantly communicate how biodiversity loss and climate change are impacting the environment over time. Our two pillars of focus, climate change impacts and First Nations advocacy, will be brought together in our next blockbuster exhibition, Sharks, which is opening downstairs in our new touring hall in just three weeks' time. This homegrown exhibition has 11 life-sized shark models intended to freak you out, including an eight-metre whale shark, as well as many specimens from our collection. On your seat tonight, you would have found a complimentary family pass to sharks. I know, how generous are we? It's great. I do hope we can welcome you back later this year to experience this extraordinary exhibition which might change the way you look at this apex predator. And the Australian Museum is continuing to lead in citizen science too through Frog ID. You won't believe this for those of you who are, were at the announcement of Frog ID at the Eurekas a few years back. We've now had almost 700,000 frog records submitted and verified around Australia by citizen scientists. There's also our Australasian Fishers Project and, of course, Digivol. I thank all those volunteer citizen scientists out there who are contributing their time, expertise and real data to increase the impact of science. So, I'm now delighted to move on and welcome your host for the evening, award-winning science writer and presenter, Ms Bernie Hobbs. Thanks everyone, it is so great to be here and Kim before you sit down, oh no sit down then, uh, it's, thank you for such a beautiful and stylish introduction to this evening and uh, I love what you've done with the place, I think every museum should have a full scale rock arena in the, uh, in the foyer, uh, that's a, a note I'll be taking to other places. I also want to thank Nathan Moran for that beautiful and hilarious welcome to country. Um, I too am uh, rapt to be here and pay my respects to Gadigal people past, present and emerging. And um, my name is Bernie Hobbs and I'm thrilled to be your host this evening where we are going to celebrate and reward excellence in science right through to the wee hours or 9.30pm, whichever comes first. <laughs> um, like Kim said, 
it is so great to be here with you in person tonight and not just because you all look so damn hot in your red carpet gear, which you do, I saw you outside. Um, it's like wall-to-wall -wall glamour here this evening and I'm sure it is for everyone watching at home too as well, even if it's just from the waist up. Um, very impressive that you pulled out the big effort. Uh, and it's good that we're looking so sharp because, as Kim said, tonight is having a live broadcast. So, you know, you want to be looking good and working those camera angles for, um, you know, for everyone who's roaming around with a lens. But obviously that's not just about the gala vibes tonight. It's about celebrating and rewarding excellence in science across the board. Now, if you know me, you'll know I get a massive competency crush on pretty much anyone who's doing anything noteworthy in the STEM field. So to make sure that we get some unbiased commentary on how incredible our winners are and how the night's rolling on, I'm going to go to two outstanding commentators a few times this evening and get their, you know, really legitimate views on what's been going on. And they are the STEM um, journalist Ray Johnston, award-winning STEM journalist Ray Johnston, and the Director of Research at the Australian Museum and Chief Scientist here, Professor Chris Helgen. So we'll be coming to you. Yep. No gushing, no effusion, leave that to me. I just want legitimate feelings, yes, and note-taking going on down there. Um, so the, it's great, like, it is great to have you both here and as well as giving us your thoughts on what's been going on. You're also going to update us on what's going on in social media. You'll be giving us uh, the, the lowdown on the things that are really lighting up Twitter. And if you want to get in on some of that, um, that posting action, especially you folks at home, jump on your preferred social platform We're using the hashtag Eureka Prizes and send our brilliant finalists some love. Do it right now. Stop listening to me rave on. Just get out your device and start sending those tweets. They may be humble, our finalists, but who doesn't love? A, a bit of public adoration, even if it is slightly cajoled and, you know, and manipulated by the person at the microphone. Um, while you're taking over the Twitter sphere, please make sure your phone is on silent because you don't want to be that guy who, uh, when it goes off mid-show, not least of all, because there's a five-year ban on Eureka nominations for anyone who interrupts the proceedings tonight. <laughs> Kim runs a tight ship. Um, and now just a quick reminder to our finalists. You saw Kim demonstrate to walk up the stairs there. I don't like to find fault in what you do, Kim, but you did leave via the stairs. We don't want any of our winners doing that tonight. Up the stairs, out via the side exit for your glamour photo shoot. Um, so for the finalists, if your name is called out as a winner, straight away, start, don't wait for anything, straight away start making your way up the front stairs and over to the podium where you'll be given your award and, and you'll have a chance to make, um, make a bit of a speech. Now, if your name is not called out, don't come up. That, <laughs> that can get a bit awkward. Yeah, so um, your name's called, you make your way up here and uh, you'll get your prize and you'll have a 30 second window for an acceptance speech. Um, now, Google says that 30 seconds is 65 words, but I reckon you can fit in a few more if you're really quick and try. It's all down to the individual. Just see what you can jam into 30 seconds. Um, see how you go, but no more, not a second more than 30, because I know all of the chemical elements up to the lanthanide series, and I'm prepared to sing that song, okay, to get you off stage. So 30 seconds is your limit. We love you just in small doses. Now, it's... <laughs> almost time to hand out the first of our awards for the evening but before we do so I am delighted to welcome to the stage to say a few words the Minister for Arts, Aboriginal Affairs, Regional Youth and Tourism, the Honourable Ben Franklin MLC. Well, thank you so much, Bernie. And can I also thank Nathan for that beautiful welcome to country. I too uh, would like to pay my respect uh, to the Gadigal people, the custodians of the land and the culture of this region who have been sharing knowledge and telling stories here for tens of thousands of years. Can I also pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging and to any other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today. Every day we all live and work and play on land which always was and always will be Aboriginal land. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as the New South Wales Minister for the Arts, I had to do my research a little before addressing you all this evening. This is because, at face value, science and the arts are very different disciplines indeed. As I'm sure you all know, science is an objective pursuit, characterised by studies, tests and repetition. All science is based on theories, and those theories need to be proven before they can be regarded as scientific fact. On the other hand, art is an entirely subjective expression of the human imagination. Unlike the scientist, the artist is not bound by the laws of nature and physics. Art does not need a theoretical base to exist. The concept of art exists. But the closer you look, the more blurred the line between science and art becomes. Both scientists and artists often find themselves developing ideas that will push the boundaries and challenge society in new ways. What's more, you don't have to look too far into history to find examples of people who were both great artists and great scientists. When Maria Merian began studying insects in the 17th century, people still believed they were beasts of the devil that spontaneously generated from mud. Merian made significant contributions to entomology and botany, but was also an acclaimed artist who published a three-volume series of insect and botanical illustrations. Of course, over a hundred years earlier, it was Leonardo da Vinci's focus on perspective and anatomy that ultimately led to him painting both the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. And today, Nobel Prize winning scientists are almost three times more likely to have an artistic hobby than any member of the general public. It seems to me that there is a very special synergy between the arts and the sciences, both disciplines enhancing the way in which we try to understand the complex world around us. And that's why I'm so delighted to be here this evening, to celebrate the achievements of our nation's incredible scientists. The world is a complicated place, but scientists who are nominated for awards this evening have been recognised for their significant contribution to help us understand at least one aspect of the world a little better. Whether in the field of medicine, environmental science or anything in between, many of you here tonight are solving some of the most challenging problems of our time. It's this kind of out-of-the-box problem solving that for me represents the overlap with the associative thought process of the artist. Fundamentally, both the scientist and the artist push the boundaries to try to provide a better explanation of the physical things that we sense and the variety of emotions that we feel. For this reason, it's so important that everyone has the ability to access the arts and the sciences regardless of who they are and where they come from. And both the Australian Museum and the New South Wales Government are committed to doing just that. For example, this year in the New South Wales budget, we've extended our free general admission program to make it possible for families to get creative and scientific experiences without being left out of pocket. During the July school holidays, the Australian Museum saw unprecedented visitation with over 100,000 people flocking to the museum. And we're incredibly excited about the upcoming Sharks exhibition, which I suspect will be even more popular. So thank you to the Australian Museum for making this possible. Thank you all for your support of this extraordinary and iconic institution, both now and into the future. But most importantly, thank you to all the finalists here tonight for your commitment to scientific excellence in Australia and for genuinely 
making the world a better place. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Minister. And we can tell that that wasn't a speech you just whipped off the shelf. So thank you very much for going to the trouble there. I do take issue with one point, though. I was just in Cape York for a week and uh, mosquito-ridden Cape York, and I'm not entirely convinced that insects are not devil's beasts. So, uh, look, I'll read the original paper, but, um, yeah, just a little bit of doubt there. Um, and, of course, I want you to stay right there because I'm asking you to hand out the first of our Eureka Prizes this evening. It's terrific that you can do that. That is the 2022 Eureka Prize for Emerging Leaders in Science. This, yeah. <laughs> this prize is awarded to an individual scientist who's used their leadership skills to create impact within their discipline or more broadly. And the finalists are... Dr. Stephanie Partridge, University of Sydney. Dr. Katerina Richter, University of Adelaide. Professor Sumit Walia, RMIT University. Minister, would you uh, do the honours? Thank you very much, Bernie. I'm delighted to announce the winner of the 2022 Eureka Prize for Emerging Leader in Science is Professor Samit Walia. Woo! your time starts now. I'll do my best. Okay, so thank you to the Australian Museum um, and the panel of judges for this honor and recognition. It means a lot. Um, congratulations also to all the fellow finalists across different categories. Uh, a big shout out to my team at RMIT, the students we work with, our ECRs, colleagues, and mentors. They are the driving force behind what we do. And last but not the least, RMIT for its strong and unwavering support. Thank you, everyone, for being here this evening, and I hope you continue to enjoy this. Thank Woo. you. Congratulations, Samit, and thank you, Minister Franklin. And before we move on to our second award for this evening, we just have a short video message from the Honourable Ed Husick, MP, Minister for Industry and Science. Minister Husick was unable to join us tonight in person, but did want to um, pass on his wishes. Hello everyone. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which you are gathering tonight, the Gadigal of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to Elders emerging, past and present. I extend my respects to any Aboriginal people at the event tonight or watching live. It is important we acknowledge country, especially at an event celebrating Australian science. The First Nations people of these lands we now call Australia have maintained the world's oldest continuous civilization, which was based on deep knowledge of the way in which this country works, the way it lives, the way it breathes. We have not previously acknowledged that. And the scientists, I'm sure you appreciate and respect that First Nations knowledge is important. And it's my determination in this role that we elevate that respect. It'll be a pillar within the work that we do as a government in terms of First Nations knowledge. I want to thank you for this opportunity to recognise the hard work and achievements of Australian scientists, researchers, science communicators and science leaders. And as the new Minister for Science, I am passionate about what your community brings to the Australian story. You not only contribute vital knowledge to power the Australian economy, improve well-being, you contribute to our human desire to understand our planet and our place in the universe. And from my perspective, we should not cast our scientific vision narrowly about making a buck, but we need to capture imagination of all Australians about how science makes a difference, again, to well-being of the country. Of course, I wish I could be with you there in person, and I trust you're having a terrific night. The Australian Government has a long history of supporting the Eureka Prizes, which were first awarded in 1990. My department sponsors two awards through the Inspiring Australia 
Science Engagement Program, the Eureka Prize for STEM inclusion and the Eureka Prize for Innovation in Citizen Science. Both recognise the extraordinary contributions made by Australians to science in this nation. I'd like to congratulate this year's finalists and to everyone involved in the Eureka Prizes. Science is certainly something worth celebrating and every one of you thoroughly deserves to feel proud this evening. Thank you. I love having a science minister. It's a great thing. Um, just before we go to the next prize, we have a show. Oh, <laughs> I've just read that bit. Um, I'm delighted now to go to the next prize and I'd like to uh, welcome Dr Cathy Foley, Australia's Chief Scientist, to announce the winners of the next two prizes, both of which are supported by the Department of Industry, Science and Resources. And the first award that Dr Foley will present is the Department of Industry, Science and Resources Eureka Prize for STEM Inclusion. This is awarded for an initiative that's led to greater inclusion in STEM. Let's meet the finalists. Kirsten Ellis, Monash University. Queers in Science. Victorian Indigenous Engineering Winter School. Views. University of Melbourne, Monash University, RMIT University and Swinburne University. I am not envying the judges right about now, Cathy. Um, that would have been a very difficult crew to, to judge from, but uh, would you do us the honour of announcing the winner? Sure, and it is great to be able to be here tonight on behalf of the Minister and to say that the winner of the 2022 Department of Industry, Science and Resources Eureka Prize for STEM inclusion is Dr Kirsten Ellis. <laughs> Clearly none of our finalists knew they were going to win because they're sitting way up the back like Kirsten. Tightly kept secret. Well done Kirsten. Every Australian needs, deserves to have access to uh, participating in science. If we want people to believe in science, we need them um, to have access, including people with disabilities. And it's up to us as scientists to actually make these things inclusive, everything that we do. I'd like to thank the Eureka, um, uh, the Australian Museum, uh, Monash University. I'd like to thank my family, particularly my children, for really teaching me what's important in life. Uh, and Monash University, uh, Faculty of IT, Thank you very much. Great work, Kirsten. And stay right there, Chief, because it's time for the next prize, and that's the 2022 Department of Industry, Science and Resources Eureka Prize for Innovation in Citizen Science. This prize is awarded for demonstrated excellence in citizen science practice through an innovative research and community engagement project. And here are our finalists. The Dignity Project, Reimagining Disability, Griffith University. The Environment Recovery Project, University of New South Wales and German Centre for Integrative Biodiversity Research. FungiMap Inc. Murray Lands and Riverland Landscape Board, Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria and University of Adelaide. Over to you, Cathy. Okay, lucky me, I get to announce two prizes and the winner of the 2022 Department of Industry, Science and Resources Eureka Prize for Innovation in Citizen Science is the Environment Recovery Project. <laughs> Congratulations to the Environment Recovery Project. Accepting on behalf of the team tonight is Casey Kirchhoff, 
who seems to have brought a gang of minders with her, which is totally okay. And But just don't think because you've brought four people up, you're getting two minutes at the leg turn. Okay, it's still a, a tight 30 seconds. Yeah. Congratulations. Casey, say a few words. Wow. Um, this is such an honour, really. Um, from the, the team and I, thank you so much to the judges and, and congratulations to everybody who was shortlisted for this fantastic award. Um, this is really a testament to people power. Uh, in the wake of disasters such as bushfires, people are really eager to get out and make a difference, to observe the world around them and really become experts in their own right. So this is really for, for everybody that gets out there and observes the world. Congratulations, Casey and the team, and thank you so much, Cathy. And if you haven't already watched, all of the finalists' videos are on the Australian Museum website, and one of the first things that struck me was that Casey actually lost her fire, uh, her home in that bushfire. So um, it's come around full circle there. It's great to see the effort being paid off by the citizen science. And now on to our next award, the 2022 Ansto Eureka Prize for Innovative Use of Technology. Joining us tonight to present the prize is Dr. Andrew Peel, Group Executive, Nuclear Science and Technology and Director of the Australian Synchrotron at ANSTO. The prize is awarded for an innovative application of a new or existing technology that's led to significantly improved research outcomes. And here are the finalists. Professor Julie Carney, University of Sydney. Professor Saheed Nahavendi, Deakin University. Nano M Slide, La Trobe University, University of Melbourne, Garvin Institute of Medical Research, and Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. And Andrew, would you do the honours? Thank you, Bernie. And the winner of the 2022 ANSTO Eureka Prize for Innovative Use of Technology is. Nano M slide. Woo! Speaking on behalf of the Nano M slide team, who I think is almost here in their entirety today, is uh, is Brian Abbey. Congratulations to the entire team. Um, so on behalf of my very talented colleagues, uh, Belinda Parker, Eugenio Balauer, Sandra O'Toole, uh, Kate Harvey and Alex Spurlung, uh, we're really, really grateful to the Australian Museum and, and ANSTO for this award. This is a fantastic recognition of what has been six years of a great collaboration between La Trobe University, Peter Mack and the Garvin Institute for Medical Research. And we're, we're thrilled to be able to present our work in applying nano -M slide to a critical problem in detecting early stage cancer. So thank you so much to everyone. And I, I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brian. Congratulations to the whole team. That slide that we saw in the introductory bit can be applied to just about any kind of cancer detection that you can name. It's a tiny thing with a hugely powerful and broad application. Well done, everyone. And yeah. <laughs> Another round, I agree. And our next prize is uh, always a crowd favourite. It is time for the first University of Sydney Sleek Geek Science Eureka Prize. <laughs> this is where the real talent shines through. Please welcome to the stage Professor Philip Gale, the Interim Dean of Science at the University of Sydney and the original and best sleek geeks, also from the University of Sydney, Dr. Carl Kruszynicki and Adam Spencer. <laughs> Over to you, Adam. Thank you very much, Bernie. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <clears throat> prestigious guest. My name is Adam Spencer. I'm Australia's 
Uh, most famous failed mathematician, <laughs> but I like to think of myself as an inspiration to fail mathematicians uh, everywhere. A show of hands for any tough crowd, Adam, move on. Uh, show of hands for any first timers here at the Eureka Prizes tonight. Who's at their first ever Eureka Prizes? <laughs> Give them all a big round of applause. Great to see you here for the first time. This is, as Bernie said, a special part of the night. It's our chance to salute the Scorseses of science, the, the Lermans of learning, the Blanchettes of biology, a group of talented young kids coming together to remind us that when we were their ages, we were doing absolutely nothing <laughs> compared to what they are. The official blurb is the Sleek Geeks University Eureka Prize is awarded for a short film that communicates a scientific concept in an accessible and engaging way. This year, the filmmakers were challenged to work on the theme of change. There were some absolutely cracking entries. Let's check out the finalists. Charlotte Lim, PLC Sydney, New South Wales. Zara Matter, PLC Sydney, New South Wales. Genevieve Saxby, Bacacia State School, Queensland. They're all here tonight, so give them a big round of applause. It's time to get down to business, Professor Gar. We don't like to say third place. Who's our second runner-up in the primary school Eureka Prizes? The second runner-up is Zara Matter. <laughs> Come on forward, Zara. Don't be shy. It's your moment to shine. Zara is a stem cell biologist in the making. <laughs> Professor Gale, who's picked up second prize in the primary school category. Our next runner up is Charlotte Lim. You saw Charlotte dressed as a cow. She used fantastic humour to explain how to reduce methane emissions. Congratulations, Charlotte. And Professor Gale, the suspense is killing me. So the winner of the 2022 Sleet Geek Science Eureka Prize for primary school is Genevieve Saxby. Do you wonder how a polar bear survives in the Arctic? Or a fish lives in the sea? I'm park ranger Genevieve, and today I'll be telling you about animal adaptation. Animal adaptation is the way an animal changes in a period of time to better suit the new environment around them. Adaptation is all about survival. In any environment, organisms will interact with each other to survive. When the environment dramatically changes, it causes the interactions between the organisms to change. This gives the animals two choices, keep doing what they're doing and die, or adapt and survive. When animals that have adapted produce offspring, the DNA from the parents combine. DNA is a substance that forms chromosomes. Chromosomes are thread-like structures which are responsible for carrying genes. These genes are found in cells that make up all organs. A baby's chromosomes carry a set of genes from each parent, which helps produce the baby's traits. It is through this process that adaptations are passed down through generations. There are three different types of adaptations. A physiological adaptation is the way an animal changes on the inside, like changes in the cells and chemicals. You see this koala? It has adapted to eating poisonous gumleys by having a huge secret containing lots of bacteria that helps break down the leaves, making it easier to absorb. Structural adaptations are similar to physiological adaptations, but are seen on the outside. Crocodiles' eyes, ears and nostrils are on the top of their head, so the crocodile can see, hear, smell and breathe while the rest of its body is underwater. A behavioural adaptation is a change affecting the way an animal acts. 
For example, when it's hot, kangaroos will lift their paws and crouch low to the ground to keep cool. So how does that polar bear survive? Adaptation. Genevieve Saxby with the science of adaptation. Dr. Carl, what did you think? Congratulations, Dr. Genevieve. Why did you manage to get into so many different forms of adaptation that you saw in the animals? Were you surprised by what you found? Yes, I was very surprised. I thought there was only one type of adaptation. I thought it was just, you change, you survive. I didn't know there were different types. Isn't it amazing, though, the way that when you go into something, you find something that you didn't expect? Yes, it's very amazing. And where, where, where's this going? Is this going on your trophy room or over the bed? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> and that proves a truly open mind that has adapted to the future. Thank you. Give them both a big round of applause. Ah. And isn't it great to see a moment where Dr. Carl is not the most colourfully dressed person on stage? <laughs> All three of our finalists in the primary school category are going to receive vouchers from Abby's Bookshop. Thank you so much to Abby's, to our young people in the audience. A bookshop, it's, 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 it's a shop full of books. Trust me, you'll absolutely love it. Give them a big round of applause. We'll be back with the Senior School Prize soon. Yes, indeed, you will be back. We'll have more Sleek Geeks and uh, the uh, Sheet Geek there, Professor Philip Gale. Don't think we didn't notice you sporting that very uh, charming look there. Um, that They'll all be back a bit later with our secondary school prizes for the Sleek Geeks competition. Um, I was so impressed with that. Normally, biology is seen as a bit of a soft science, but Genevieve really got it there with the um, adapt or die tagline. Um, I think she really nailed it. Um, well done, everyone. We are five prizes in, so it's time to take stock of where we're at this evening and uh, hear what our, what our expert commentators are feeling about our amazing winners and legendary finalists. So we're just going to take a moment to soak up that vibe and we're going to cross live via satellite straight up here and then right down there to our commentators, award-winning STEM journalist Ray Johnston and the Australian Museum's chief scientist, Professor Chris Helgren. Ray and Chris, take us through your highlights so far. Look, I know that I'm here to be objective. Oh, but good luck I'm with that. absolutely just fangirling at the moment. <laughs> so apologies in advance. I just need to call out the Nano M slide for how intensely cool that technology is. They've taken essentially just a normal microscope glass and turned it into a whole diagnostic lab. There's, there's a special coating on that glass that the cancer cells interact with. They immediately change colour. So you've got this instant cheater technology. Incredible. That also importantly is supported by Latrobe Strategic Innovation Fund and it's bridging that gap or aiming to bridge that gap between innovation that we're coming up with in this country and turning it into a commercial product, turning it into a business which is frustratingly sometimes the hardest bit about doing yeah. science in this country. A big bottleneck oftentimes. It was great to see that Nano M slide team up there too, the right. whole, whole group. It's a reminder that uh, science really is a team sport and that's how it really gets done. Definitely. Hmm. Uh, I also, of course, want to uh, give a shout out to the Sleek Geeks. How good is it oh, to see absolutely. those kids up there winning? And, and Ranger Genevieve. Oh, Park Animal. Ranger Genevieve <laughs> needs her own television show. Can someone make that happen, that. please? Okay. She's got a YouTube channel. Everyone right. go subscribe immediately. You're allowed to be on your phones. It's fine. <laughs> the animal adaptation. She's speaking, <laughs> speaking our language here at the Australian Museum. And, and speaking of being on our phones, I'm allowed to check in on Twitter here. So I'm just going to have a look and see what people are saying about the event. I hope that everyone's been tweeting in. Eureka ah. Prizes, hashtag Eureka Prizes. We've got uh, Jenny Martin, who is at Jenny underscore, underscore STEM, watching all the excitement of the Eureka Prizes from the Eurostar travelling in rural France. Mm. Science and technology for the win, she says. Uh, we've also got Russell Briggs saying, hey, it's the Eureka Prizes and I'm wearing a tux. Go, Russell. <laughs> Susanna Macbeth 
is saying thanks to the Eureka Prizes for providing this fantastic platform to celebrate science. Working in science can be hard, fulfilling, thrilling and hard slog all at once. But there's no doubt everyone in the room tonight deserves recognition for their work. Absolutely. I think my favourite tweet, though, uh, comes from a tweeter who says that he's excited to share this item from my hashtag Etsy shop. Genuine felt and leather, grey desk mat, best office keyboard mat, leather computer mat, hashtag Eureka Prizes. <laughs> Back to you, Bernie. Whatever it takes to turn a buck in these tough times, I've got to say. Um, thank you very much, Ray and Chris. We'll be back with you in about another five prizes time to hear how things are going there. But it's time to roll on to prize number six. And I'm delighted to welcome the Honourable James Griffin MP, New South Wales Minister for Environment and Heritage, to announce the winner of the 2022 New South Wales Environment and Heritage Eureka Prize for Applied Environmental Research. The prize is awarded for outstanding research that's led to practical improvement in the management or protection of Australia's natural environment. Here's the finalists. Infuse, Griffith University and University of Western Australia. Sheridan Morris, Dr. David Westcott, Dr. Cameron Fletcher, Dr. Mary Bonin and Dr. Suzanne Long. Reef and Rainforest Research Centre. Sustainable Farms, Australian National University. Congratulations to all our finalists. <laughs> Minister, would you like to say a few words? Absolutely, Bernie. Thank you so much. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is wonderful to be here. Kim, thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we are celebrating uh, this wonderful, wonderful event uh, this evening. Um, friends, we all know that uh, it is science that holds the keys to solve some of the most significant environmental challenges that we face. And that is why uh, we, as the New South Wales government, are so proud to be sponsoring this particular award. Scientists working with my department conduct a huge range of impressive work. Uh, they use drones, automated sound recorders, camera traps, and sophisticated genetic modelling to help save threatened species like koala and platypus. They deliver beach watch, which allows us to report swimming water quality and keep swimmers and surfers healthy. They monitor air quality and deliver data, forecasts and alerts in real time. They developed and continue to deliver the biodiversity indicator program, which tracks the status and trends of biodiversity in New South Wales. And They've delivered and updated NARCLIM, which generates detailed climate projections and data for New South Wales. That is just some of what they do for our state, because we all know and celebrate that science underpins the work to conserve and protect our beautiful environment. The Department of Planning and Environment's Science, Economics and Insights Division is proud to sponsor the Eureka Prize for Applied environmental research and we all agree that the caliber of finalists this evening demonstrates the strength of our research community and so with that i'm delighted to announce the winner of the 2022 new south wales environment and heritage eureka prize for applied environmental research is sustainable farms <laughs> Congratulations to the Sustainable Farms team for making it through that entire speech, wondering when the hell are we going to find out who won. Uh, good job, you. And representing the team tonight are Michelle Young, Professor David Lindenmeyer, and random guy in suit who walked up, but whose name is not written here. thank the farmers that we work with. Um, the data sets that we collect are only made possible because of the hundreds of farmers that work with our project who are doing amazing things to restore, um, you know, to restore the biodiversity on their farms. So 
thank you to the farmers and thank you to the ANU for supporting this um, opportunity to get the leading science out into the community. Great. Anything else? <laughs> thank you. Fantastic, Michelle. Make sure you watch that video. It's really brilliant to see um, how the birds are being used as indicator species on farms and just making really common sense decisions about how to monitor and improve our, um, our biodiversity in agricultural centres. Um, to announce the next award, that's the 2022 University of Technology Sydney Eureka Prize for Outstanding Mentor of Young Researchers, I'd like to welcome Professor Kate McGrath, Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Vice-President Research from the University of Technology Sydney. This prize is awarded to an individual who's helped develop the next generation of Australia's scientific researchers, and our finalists are... Professor Sarah Dolnikar, University of Queensland. Professor Maria Cavallaris, AM, University of New South Wales and Children's Cancer Institute. Professor Paul Wood, AO, Monash University. Such a stellar field of mentors there and our finalists. Kate, would you do us the honour? Thank you very much and good evening, everybody. Um, the winner of the 2022 University of Technology Sydney Eureka Prize for Outstanding Mentor of Young Researchers is Professor Paul Wood. So thank you to the University of Technology Sydney for sponsoring this award, to the other founders of this, uh, of the IMNIS program, Ronnie Wood, John Kirby and Tony Radford, to the Academy of Technology, Science and Engineering for taking on this program and expanding it, to Maggie evans galia for her leadership over the last years, but most importantly for the over 700 mentors who donate their time to this program to, to basically mentor the next generation of leaders in STEM in Australia. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Paul, and all of those 700-odd mentors. Terrific work, and thank you very much, Kate. Now, I was so keen to get started at the beginning that I didn't really talk about how great it is to actually have the Eureka Prizes here at the museum. I don't think there's been a time in living memory when the prizes have been hosted here at the museum before, although I should probably ask Robin Williams because he's got a longer living memory than I do. So, um, but I think that is absolutely 100% true. It's great, of course, it's everyone's dream to be in a museum after hours and, you know, strolling through the canopies with our, you know, drinks, strolling through the galleries with our drinks and canapes. Might have had a few too many mineral waters. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it, it does feel, it's very glamorous, it feels a lot more art after dark than Jumanji in here, let me tell you that. And uh, I'm sure that you also know, as well as being a fantastic, engaging and even more so museum um, and the host of the Eureka Prizes, the Australian Museum also has a gun research institute with more than 100 scientists and we're going to hear from chief of those scientists, you've met him already this evening, Professor Chris Helgen, um, about AMRI. And as he makes his way to the stage, let's just learn a bit more about the Australian Museum Research Institute, AMRI. The Australian Museum Research Institute strives to understand and respond to the challenges facing our planet through scientific research, communication and education. In 2022, our staff, senior fellows and research associates described 184 new species, including new cryptic fish species endemic to Aotearoa, New Zealand, and named the largest egg-laying mammal that ever lived. Our research is underpinned by an incredible 22 million objects and specimens, and significant scientific focus areas, including 
the Australian Centre for Wildlife Genomics, the Australian Museum Centre for Citizen Science, Australian Museum Expeditions and the Lizard Island Research Station. Allowing us to protect our planet via the 245 publications we've produced over the past 12 months including the most detailed mapping of Australia's frog species and one of the most significant fossil sites ever found in New South Wales. The Australian Museum Research Institute, the power of science, communication and education to change the world. Good evening. I'm honored to be here tonight, and I'm incredibly proud of the Australian Museum Research Institute for everything we've achieved this year. Although it's been another challenging year, we have seen just how important science is as a beacon of hope in our society. We've also seen how important science communication and celebrating our champions has become. This year, we celebrated and recognized three of AMRI Lifetime Achievement Award winners Dr. Val Attenborough was celebrated as our 2020 recipient in recognition, recognition of her significant lifelong contribution to Australian archaeology. Our 2021 winner, Professor William Sherwin, was celebrated for his truly remarkable career as a researcher on the biodiversity of Australia and surrounds. And we honored Mr. Brian Sherman AM, our 2022 winner, in recognition of a significant contribution to animal welfare to the advancement of science and scientific research, service to the community as a philanthropist, and lifetime support of the Australian Museum. Now here at AMRI, we're excited about the future. Many people may think of museums as a place that's focused on the past, but the work we do is also focused on responding to current challenges and anticipating the needs of the future. AMRI is a home for the curious, the innovative, and the passionate. Our scientists research, steward, and manage our vast collections whilst undertaking crucial fieldwork and expeditions. Our pioneering science inspires interest in the natural world, informs national and international decision makers, and educates the public on the major issues of our time. Looking to the horizon, we are investing in cutting edge technology to bolster our scientific endeavors, planning a new CT scanning facility and a state of the art ancient DNA lab. Over the next several years, we will continue to digitize millions of specimens and objects as part of our collection enhancement project, rendering our collections ever more accessible to scientists and to the public. AMRI will continue to provide for and inspire generations of curious, passionate, and innovative scientists to come. Now I'll hand over to Professor Kathy Belov AO, Australian Museum trustee, Chair of our Science Advisory Board, Professor of Comparative Genomics, and Pro Vice Chancellor, Global Engagement at the University of Sydney, to present the AMRI Medal. Thank you, Chris. This evening, I'm delighted to be presenting the first of two AMRI Medals. The AMRI Medal is awarded to a staff member, senior fellow or team from the Australian Museum Research Institute or to a supporter from another museum for outstanding science and communication. This year's first AMRI Medal recipient is Dr. Stephen Keeble. Dr. Keeble has been at the heart of the Australian Museum Research Institute for many years. He is a taxonomic expert in crustacea and has particular interests in introduced species, interactive identification keys, biodiversity databases and collection management. Steve is enjoying a well-deserved long service leave break before he returns to the museum as a senior fellow. Until recently, Steve was the manager of the Marine Invertebrates Collection, a position he's held since 2006. Steve started his career at the Australian Museum in 1983 as a volunteer while finishing his Bachelor of Science at the University of New South Wales. After working as a technical officer on various marine invertebrate projects, 
He was appointed to the permanent staff in 1998. During this period, he also completed postgraduate studies, focusing on the role of invertebrate scavengers in the marine food web, which yielded a Master of Science from Macquarie University in 1993. He then went on to study the identification, distribution, and relationship of isopods, slaters, which earned him a PhD from Macquarie University in 1997. Slaters play an important role in recycling nutrients in aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems. Steve has undertaken fieldwork throughout much of Australia, as well as Papua New Guinea, Thailand, New Zealand, French Polynesia, and Fiji. He has authored or co-authored descriptions of more than 39 new species of freshwater and marine isopods. More recently, he's developed an interest in the spread and impact of the upside down jellyfish in New South Wales coastal lakes and has contributed to the description of new species of skeleton shrimp and tube anemones. Always keen to work with students and citizen scientists, you may have seen Steve recently in the Sydney Morning Herald talking about tropical starfish. Steve helped identify the Pentacerasta regular species, which was found by a student on the New South Wales mid-north coast, 600 kilometres from where it should have been found, highlighting the effects of climate change on our warming waters. So congratulations, Dr Stephen Keeble. What a great honour. Um, I think it's a truism in science that we stand on the shoulders of giants, and um, I'm no different. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the many directors of the museum that I've worked with um, over the years, including most recently Kim, and uh, of course Chris Hilgen, um, director of AMRI, uh, and the many colleagues that I've worked with um, over the years. Um, I couldn't have achieved anything without their support. Um, most notably, uh, Jim Lowry, who gave me my first job here at the museum in 1983, uh, Buzz Wilson, uh, Penny Berents, and Pat Hutchings, who also all supported me. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank my family. Uh, they've, they've given me tremendous support over the years. So thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Congratulations, and thank you, Stephen. Now I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Kim McKay, CEO and Director of the Australian Museum, who will announce the second of our AMRI medal recipients. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cathy, and congratulations, Steve. One of the great things about the Australian Museum is our scientists come here as young people and they stay forever. And it's just great, because uh, that knowledge and the way they share it with younger scientists coming up through the Australian Museum Research Institute is just tremendous. So I'm thrilled that Steve Keeble and his work has been recognised this evening. But tonight I also have the distinct pleasure of awarding a second Amory Medal to someone outside of the Australian Museum, indeed someone from another museum. I'm proud to call the recipient a colleague, supporter and friend, and I'm referring to Professor Graham Durant, AM. Graham, during your 23 years heading Questacon in Canberra, you have been a champion not only for your own organisation, but a champion for the work we do here at the Australian Museum, and a champion of science and science education in Australia. Graham recently retired from his role at Questacon, and I know we congratulate him on all he achieved there. He was integral to the development and staging of the Spiders exhibition that we did together and for all those arachnophobes out there, this exhibition is still touring the United States some seven years later. As a supporter of citizen science, Graham advocated for the Australian Museum's successful submission for one of the first citizen science grants from the Commonwealth Government. This initial grant kick-started the groundbreaking National Citizen Science Project, Frog ID. He was also instrumental in the establishment of the Eureka Prize for Innovation in Citizen Science 
and has served as a judge for this prize. Most recently, Graham's been a staunch advocate for action on climate change across the museum sector internationally and encouraged museums here to adopt the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I'm so pleased to recognise Professor Graham Durant with an Amory Medal tonight. I can't thank him enough for his support and his undaunted commitment to Questacon in Canberra and science education and the role of museums globally, globally during his extraordinary career. Congratulations, Professor Graham Durant, and uh, let me give you this. Well, thank you, Kim. That, that was a surprise. I had no idea this was happening. So it's um, delightful to get this award and uh, to get it from such a great organization. And uh, I, I'm so pleased. But of course, you know, I work with many other people. And, uh, you know, I always get the job of accepting the medal on behalf of a huge team of people who work with me and all the colleagues who work in the museum sector. We've got some very important work to do influencing attitudes and behaviors and preparing for the world we want to see. So thank you all, thank you, Kim, and thank you. <laughs> Typical, I've missed my cue. I'm announcing the next award, apparently. Hang on. I am. It seems my notes tell me I am. Okay. This, um, so, oh, I know what I'm doing now. As a science communicator who sometimes loses her place, an environmental advocate, this next prize is very important to me. I also have the honour tonight of presenting the Australian Museum Eureka Prize for Science Journalism. Quality science journalism has the power to cut through the clutter and misinformation in this post-truth world to make us aware and even stir us to take more action. This prize is awarded to an Australian journalist or team of journalists whose work is assessed as having most effectively communicated scientific issues to the public. Let's meet this year's finalists. Dr. Diani Lewis. Dr. Jackson Ryan. CNET, Carl Smith, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. What an impressive trio, uh, drum roll. The winner of the 22 Australian Museum Eureka Prize for Science Journalism is Dr. Jackson Ryan. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Jackson. You were a, a finalist last year, and I think the year before, too. So wonderful to see you win this prize. Say a few words. All right, I'm taking a minute. Sorry, Bernie. Uh, no, just very quickly, of course, I just want to thank the, the judges, uh, Susanna. Uh, Jenny, Marcus, and Bruce, thank you so much. I know it's not easy to do a, a judging job. I'm a little bit nervous. I, holy shit, like this is really amazing to me. Um, I have been a, a finalist for the last couple of years and I love this award and I love that the Australian Museum has supported it for the last two, uh, since 2019, I believe. Uh, science journalism, journalism is so important and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that there's an award like this. The Walkleys, I don't know who's here from MEAA, Walkleys get on board, there needs to be a Science Journalism Award there too. Um, and I just want to also say, uh, you know, you get $10,000. Shush! You get $10,000 for this award and I'm so lucky that the finalists who shared this with me, Carl Smith and Diani Lewis, um, I just want to uh, say that I'm going to give part of my uh, award to you guys as well. Um, I think I have to put my money where my mouth is. And uh, that means supporting science journalism and supporting you guys. Thank you so much. Bernie, I told you I was taking a minute, mate. I told you. <laughs>
Well done, Jackson. Congratulations. And you caught me out. I only know it as far as oxygen anyway. So um, <laughs> glad you didn't have too much more speaky to do. Um, well done, all of those finalists. Thank you so much, Kim. Congratulations to Steve, who... Um, 39 years in this job has achieved such an incredible amount and really that's obviously the secret to not ageing. Work at the museum for 39 years, he looks about 40. Um, also, Graham Durant, brilliant work in Questacon for all these years. I'm so glad that was a complete surprise to you and you weren't weirded out by just being flown up from Canberra for no obvious reason <laughs> on a Wednesday night. Um, Graham's a hero to everyone in science communication, not just for the work he did, but he also gave most of us a ride on a Segway back in the day. So um, that was pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Um, we've really, we're really smashing through the, the awards this evening. That was already award number eight that Jackson just received, and we've got seven more prizes to go. I know there are only 14 prizes, but there are two sleek geeks, so. Um, I'm delighted now to move on to the next award and welcome Professor Saki Pretorius, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Research at Macquarie University, to announce the winner of our next prize, the 2022 Macquarie University Eureka Prize for Outstanding Early Career Researcher. And this prize is awarded for outstanding scientific research conducted by an individual early career researcher. Here are the finalists. Associate Professor Chris Brennan-Jones, Telethon Kids Institute and Curtin University. Associate Professor Chris Greening, Monash University. Dr. Tess Reynolds, University of Sydney. Professor Pretorius, you have the answer. The winner of the 2022 Macquarie University Eureka Prize for Outstanding Early Career Researcher is Dr. Tess Reynolds. <laughs> It is weird that we make the winners walk all the way and the dignitaries just get to sit down the front here, but soak up the vibe. Well, thank you very much. Um, I definitely have to start by thanking everyone at the University of Sydney, Faculty of Medicine, Health, Health Sciences, uh, the ImageX Institute. Uh, also, a quick shout out, uh, this work would not be possible without my amazing friends and collaborators at John Hopkins University in the US and Steven, Siemens Health and Ears in Germany. I'd like to thank my friends and family for uh, sticking with me through science and, and just nodding along when I tell them what I'm doing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also a shout out to um, my PhD uh, supervisor and still a mentor today, uh, Professor Tanya Munro. So thank you very much. Woo! If you're not familiar with Tessa's work, make sure you go online and watch the video. She has made this crazy robotic imaging system that works in real time in, um, in surgery and in whatever. It's absolutely mind-blowing, so it's a lot more interesting than she and her family made it sound. Uh, I would now like to um, introduce the, uh, the, our next presenter, Dr. David Kershaw from Defence Science and Technology, to announce the winner of the 2022 Department of Defence Eureka Prize for Leadership in Science and Innovation. And this prize is awarded to an individual who has successfully integrated their scientific expertise with the leadership skills necessary to nurture, inspire and mobilise their peers. Let's meet the finalists. Professor Raina McIntyre, University of New South Wales. Professor Geordie Williamson, University of Sydney. Professor Wei Zhang, Flinders University and Marine Bioproducts Cooperative Research Centre. Good evening. Um, firstly, apologies for Professor Tanya Munro who had to pull out of being here this morning, so I am a, literally a last minute fill in. But it's at my pleasure to, to announce that the winner of the 2022 Department of Defence Eureka Prize for leadership in science and innovation is Professor Raina McIntyre. Woo! 
Yes. Very short walk to the stage for Raina there. Um, congratulations, Professor McIntyre. I am just used to seeing you on the telly, so this seems very fitting to have you on an uber-sized screen up on stage tonight. Would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you. Thanks to the Australian Museum, uh, to the Department of Defence, to my wonderful university, UNSW, to Tony Kelleher, the director of the Kirby Institute, to Lisa Ma for being a wonderful colleague and to my fantastic team at the Biosecurity Program, my collaborators everywhere, my family, and I'd like to acknowledge the other finalists. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Professor McIntyre. You might not have been steering the ship during the COVID storm, but uh, you were a consistent voice of reason for all of us passengers. And thank you, David Kershaw. <laughs> Time to zoom back to our resident commentators, Ray and Chris. What's been standing out for you with our most recent re um, winners, Chris? Uh, well, I want to echo what you said, Bernie, about getting on the Australian Museum webpage to mm. Eureka Prizes and go and see those videos because we don't have a chance to uh, expand on the, the work too much. But um, thinking about early career researcher Tess, Tess Reynolds, that was a great uh, salute to her. Um, what she's doing is this innovative robotic imaging for surgery for cardiovascular and spinal surgeries. Check that out, it's fantastic. Mm. I also liked seeing uh, Graham Durant and Steve Keeble recognized for decades of work in museums. <laughs> Graham Durant is giving you bunny ears at the moment, so you might want to retract right that. He's allowed to, he contributed to all of our childhoods. It's, <laughs> it's perfectly reasonable. We uh, all know Questica. Also, I'd like to shout out to uh, Dr. Keeble for teaching me both that there are upside down jellyfish <laughs> and also why they're upside down, which is because they've got algae on the bottom, so they need to flip upside down so they can photosynthesize. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? It. I'm glad not to hear they're not just feeling unwell. Yeah. No, that, that, that would be a concern. Uh, but from that session just then, I, I think I do need to also call out how important science communication is, mm. how important science journalism is, and also how tricky it is to get it right because you want to be able to present this information in a way that excites other people as much as it excites you, but you have to not sensationalise it. You have to be accurate to the science, and it's a difficult balance to do. So congratulations to my former colleague, Jackson Ryan, yeah. on his award. Well done, Jackson. And I also just want to say how much I'm inspired by people like Professor Raina McIntyre, who not only do incredible work in their own research, her research has gone on to form international public policy on health. She's always available for a comment to make sure journalists like myself don't get it wrong. So a, thank you. a fixture you. on our evening televisions. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Do you want to see what people are tweeting? Yes, let's right, check it out. Right, I'll get my phone. Thank you. <laughs> So we've got Stella, at Stella, who says, when I grew up, I want to be park ranger Genevieve. <laughs> Highlighting everything. Uh, we've also got uh, Kathy Belov calling out chief scientist uh, at Kay Helgen, whoever that is over Wait here. Wait a second. Taking the stage at the Eureka Prizes, <laughs> highlighting the amazing Kathy work right done yes. by AMRI scientists. Remember what I said about objective stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, we've also got uh, Associate Professor Ricky Spencer who's rocking his best pair of Converse tonight. All right. <laughs> so, thank you all for the fashion updates. They've been really useful. Well, Nobody we can't even. let Tess Reynolds' orange shoes go without comment. Absolutely really, not. they were, you know, winners Scientists on their own. Scientists are the best dressers. I will say this forever. No, don't look at me like that, Bernie. You know I'm right. Oh, was I looking like something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yes, you say that. Yes. <laughs> Look, thanks, thanks for calling out those great tweets and for your fantastic ongoing commentary. We will come back to you at the end of all of our prizes this evening. And don't forget, you can be part of the social convo as well. Just get on your favourite platform, hashtag Eureka Prizes. If you're like me, you're on both social media platforms, the email and the text message. Um, so I'm just going to do a little broadcast or contacts, hashtag. That'll go viral. For sure, yeah. Um, make sure, especially if you're at home, join in the uh, online conversation with that hashtag. And now it's time for the second of tonight's Sleek Geek Awards, 
we turn our attention to the 2022 University of Sydney Sleek Geek Science Eureka Prize Secondary, returning to announce the runners-up and winner are Professor Philip Gale, the chic scientist, uh, Dr. Carl and Adam Spencer, the Sleek Geeks from the University of Sydney. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, how about, how about an awkwardly loud round of applause for Bernie Hobbs for the wonderful job she's doing so far. Keep it up, Bernie. Great stuff. Ray mentioned how hard it is, how tricky it is to excite people and communicate the interests of science. Imagine doing that in just a two-minute film format. That's what these wonderful senior school scientists and science journalists have done. Our video package. Let's have a look at the finalists for the Sleek Geeks High School Prize. Marissa Chow, Somerville House, Queensland. Aidy Han, Tara Cassia Panand, and Ellen Zheng. Lauriston Girls School, Victoria. Eastern Rush, St John's Anglican College, Forest Lake, Queensland. A big round of applause, they can hear your applause right now. <laughs> Take it away, Professor Gale. So our second runner-up tonight is Marissa Chow. Marissa's work was fantastic. She did a scientific analysis of the accuracy or otherwise of the film Finding Nemo. Turns out they took some liberties with the truth. Congratulations, Marissa. <laughs> Professor. Second place is awarded to A.D. Hahn, Tara Kaseya Panand, and Ellen Zheng. Ada, Tara, and Ellen, for a catchy little tune as their musical talents explained what was going on with COVID. Congratulations to the three of them, A.D., Tara, and Ellen. And the winner, please, Professor. So the winner of the 2022 Sleek Geek Science Eureka Prize for secondary school is Easton Rush. Everyone wishes to change at least one thing in their life. Might be your height, your biology teacher, or the volume of veggies on your plate. But did you know you can actually change your brain? It was thought that our brains stopped changing once they hit puberty. Thanks to recent advancements in brain scan technology, it has shown that learning alters our brains at a cellular level and our brains never stop changing to make room for new information. This process is known as neuroplasticity. So, brain cells are called neurons. These neurons have central bodies and nuclei, like most other cells, but they also have a long axon and many spindly dendrites. The connections that neurons make through their dendrites and axon are called synapses. These synapses are like pathways or roads for information and are triggered by thoughts, actions, or emotions. So when you're born, each neuron has 2,500 synapses. By age three, this increases to about 15,000. However, by the time you're an adult, that amount is halved. Why? Synaptic pruning. Younger kids need a synapse for their every experience. However, our brains can become so crowded with information that pruning is necessary to avoid sensory overload. Those that are used the least weaken and disconnect, while those that are used regularly become stronger. Take tying your shoelace. When you first start, you aren't that great. But as you practice, the neural pathways for this activity are reinforced. Eventually, by the time you're an adult, you've tied a shoelace thousands of times and use those synapses to the point where they are so strong that happens instinctively. You can do up your shoe or talking on your phone and listening to your kids whine. This works for any activity, from your times tables to competitive duck herding. In the future, neuroplasticity may assist in overcoming learning difficulties as well as the recovery from brain trauma. So, by repeating and adjusting your behaviour, you can change your brain.
and I've worked with Dr. Carl for over 20 years, so I know exactly what sensory overload is all about, my friend. <laughs> Carl, what do you want to ask of this brilliant young filmmaker? Um, Dr. Easton, you mentioned the times tables. How high do you know the times tables by memory up to? Eight or 10 or 12? Um, I actually know mine to 16. Yeah. 16. <laughs> and did you do that whole take in one go? Did you have somebody writing something up there on auto cue or did you just do it out of your skull? Um, I just did it from memory. It was a lot of practice and a lot of hard work. <laughs> Paid off. It did. And, uh, and what, uh, where, where do you think neuroplasticity will lead to in years to come? Um, it might lead to like curing genetic diseases as we can like maybe harness that phenomenon to like cure like brain like in brain activity that isn't actually supposed to happen like when someone is accidentally rendered blind or deaf we could use neuroplasticity to like reinvigorate those senses please send your grant applications directly here <laughs> congratulations Easton thank you very much Professor Gale and Dr Carl back to you Bernie Fantastic. Keep it going for those Sleek Geek prizes. I guarantee if you start on the page with all of the finalists, you should go there first and you will watch every single one of both lots of Sleek Geeks uh, prizes. They are just brilliant. I love how the thing that Dr. Carl picked up was what anyone who's ever had to do a piece to camera picked up, and that was how did you manage to do two minutes without a break? That was absolutely brilliant. Um, and clearly, uh, yeah, um, Easton's brain synapses haven't been as heavily pruned as some of us this evening. Um, <laughs> Well done. I also want to give a mention to um, the, I can't remember her name, sorry, the, the young woman who did um, the Finding Nemo. Uh, here's a little spoiler for you. Um, when Nemo's mum died, his dad should have turned into a woman and Nemo should have mated with her. So I kind of feel like I get the vibe on why Pixar went with the other storyline. <laughs> um, but well spotted, legend. Okay, time for our next award, the 2022 UNSW Eureka Prize for Scientific Research. And joining us to announce the winner is Professor Nicholas Fisk, AM Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Enterprise from UNSW Sydney, where they really know how to rock a stunning jacket, as you will see in just a moment. Oh no, it was, it was too bright, obviously, for the lighting. Um, now, this prize is awarded for outstanding curiosity-driven scientific research, and the 2022 finalists are... Associate Professor Kate Quinlan and Professor Merlin Crossley, University of New South Wales. Associate Professor Tim Thomas, Professor Jonathan Bale, and Professor Anne Voss. We high and Monash Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Professor Justin Yerbury, AM, University of Wollongong. And Nicholas, the winner. So Bernie, thanks. It's a real treat to present this UNSW Eureka Prize for Scientific Research. The winner of which is Professor Justin Yerbury, AM. <laughs> Congratulations, Professor Yerbury. Would you like to say a few words? And can we start that again? Yeah. 
Yeah, it should be on. Australian Museum for a recognizing so much great science tonight. I have too many people that I would like to thank, so I cannot name them all. But first and foremost, nothing would be possible without my wife Rachel, not even life itself. My daughters Talia and Maddie, family and friends have also been great supporters of my work. I also have to thank my amazing research team and some close-knit collaborators that have all gone above and beyond what would normally be expected of them. The University of Wollongong and Emory have been tremendous supporters of me and my work. They have actively removed all barriers for me to keep working. Lastly, I would like to thank the people of Wollongong and more recently people all across the country that have been great supporters of our work, ranging from letters of encouragement to substantial donations. Thank you very much and congratulations again, <laughs> Professor Yerbury. You really need to see, if you're not familiar with Professor Yerbury's work, you really need to um, check in and see his video. Uh, he went into genetics and molecular biology research when he found out that his family carried the genetic um, predisposer to um, motor neurone disease. So um, his work has just been phenomenal and obviously extremely personal for him. Congratulations again. Well done, <laughs> Professor Justin Yerbury. And thank you very much, Nicholas Fisk, and your amazing jacket. Um, just three more prizes left to award, and I'm delighted to welcome Professor Paul Young from the Office of the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research and Innovation at the University of Queensland to announce the winner of the 2022 Australian Infectious Diseases Research Centre Eureka Prize for Infectious Diseases Research. This prize is awarded for, an out, for outstanding infectious diseases research that benefits or has the potential to benefit human health. And here are this year's finalists. Associate Professor Eric Chow. Professor Christopher Fairley. Professor Catriona Bradshaw. Professor Jane Hocking. Professor Deborah Williamson. And Professor Marcus Chen. Monash University and University of Melbourne. Community for Open Antimicrobial Drug Discovery. University of Queensland. Associate Professor James Trower, Monash University. And over to you for the big announcement, Paul. Thanks, Bernie. What an amazing night of extraordinary science here yeah. tonight. Um, so Great pleasure in announcing the winner of the 2022 Australian Infectious Diseases Research Centre Eureka Prize for Infectious Disease. And the winners are Associate Professor Eric Chow, uh, Christopher Fairley, Catriona Bradshaw, Jane Hocking, Deborah Williamson and Marcus Chen. I'm not sure what the collective noun for a group of professors is, but I feel like we're about to find out. Now, what is it with professors that they don't know how to follow simple instructions? Up by the stairs, too many qualifications. That's your problem. Use the stairs, people. Well done. And that was excellent reading, Paul. I love how, you know, the winners had to be the very longest list possible. Congratulations, and speaking on behalf of the team tonight is yeah. Professor Christopher Fairley. We're very grateful for all of those that have made this possible. We want to thank your committee, the museum, our collaborators, the nurses, doctors, and scientists who look after the patients that we serve. You may not know, but the rates of sexually transmitted infections are primarily driven by stigma, and poor access to healthcare, and not by personal choices. Reducing stigma and improving these services reduces these infections. We're delighted to have played our part 
in achieving this through research and innovation. Thank you. Congratulations. Well done to the entire team and thanks very much, Paul Young. Well done. Great. Okay, uh, next up joining me on stage is Duncan Challen, the General Manager Business Development from Celestino, to announce the winner of the 2022 Celestino Eureka Prize for promoting understanding of science. This prize is awarded to an individual scientist who's shared their expertise with a broad audience, informing, enthusing and engaging the public. Let's meet the finalists. Professor Ewan Ritchie. Deakin University. Professor Veena Sahajwala, University of New South Wales. Professor Toby Walsh, University of New South Wales. And over to you, Duncan. The winner of the Celestino Eureka Prize for promoting understanding of science is Professor Veena Sahajwala. <laughs> Venus here. I was talking to her outside in the long room. Here she comes. She had to just quickly text everyone and send out a few um, messages on social media. Nearly there, Vina. Are you thinking of 30 words to say? Yeah, I feel the pressure. Thank you very much. This is, uh, this is an absolute surprise. I have to acknowledge Toby and you, and my goodness, wow. I mean, these are the people who inspire us each and every day when we listen to the incredible work that scientists across the country and across the world do. And um, for me, it's just a privilege. And, and I think I, I get to live uh, my dream each and every day. But the most important thing is I get to share and excite people and and to me I guess the the thing that gives me hope and optimism for the future is the fact that there are all these incredibly brilliant young people who love science and wow and communicate science wow I mean these kids are inspiring I want to thank University of New South Wales and uh, everyone who has been such a fabulous supporter our team um, at the University Smart Center, and I want to say thank you so much for all those incredible partners in our local councils, in our communities, uh, in businesses who, who actually want to see and shape a sustainable future, and this is why we do science. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Veena. Vina was one of the first people I ever interviewed at the ABC about 24 years ago. She was already working on green steel then. She's been working on green ceramics, building micro, micro factories. Um, she's been tireless in her pursuit of seeing waste as a resource and she's brought us all along that journey with her. Um, for Vina, one man's trash will always be her treasure. There's no denying it and she's such a brilliant communicator. I'm so happy um, that the the prize went to you. You're a legend, Vina, a legend. Thank you so much, Duncan, for beautifully awarding and sponsoring that prize as well. And now, on to the next award, our very last award for the evening. I'm delighted to welcome the President of the Australian Museum Trust. He's obviously very keen to get cracking because I've still got a bit to read here. <laughs> David Armstrong, who will announce the winner of the 2022 Eureka Prize for Excellence in Interdisciplinary Scientific Research. As David makes his way to the stage, that was your cue, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that he has served with distinction on the Australian Museum Trust for the past nine years, including six years as president. And now this is his last year. David, it'll be great to welcome you back to the awards ceremony next year where you can just sit back, chill and have a drink instead of having to do any of this, uh, of this work business. Um, before we meet the finalists though, David, you'd like to say a few words. Thanks, Bernie. Um, before I present the final prize for the evening, may I offer on behalf of the Australian Museum Trustees and the Trustees of the Australian Museum Foundation, 
and the Lizard Island Re Research Foundation, my sincere congratulations to all the finalists and all the winners. We've been in a, uh, I think we've seen an extraordinary uh, array of science on display tonight and I think it's just fantastic. Mm. I'd also like to take a moment to recognise those that are behind the scenes, uh, the prize sponsors. Thank you for partnering with the Australian Museum uh, to celebrate and reward the best of Australian science. With your help, uh, I think we really are inspiring the next generation of Australian science innovators, leaders and communicators. Now, while you haven't heard the last of them for the evening, I would like to thank our extraordinary Bernie Hobbs and the always eloquent... Thank you. Ray Johnson and Professor Chris Helgen, the Australian Museum Chief Scientist. Great work tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks. Absolute pleasure, David, on behalf of all three of us. And um, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight on to the next prize, the Eureka Prize in Excellence in Interdisciplinary Science Re Scientific Research is awarded for an outstanding research outcome that was only possible as a result of the integration of two or more unrelated disciplines. Here are the finalists. The Extreme Heat and Health Adaptation Team, University of Adelaide. Professor Manfred Lenzen. Professor David Raubenheimer. Dr. Arunima Malik. Dr. Menju Lee and Navoda Liana Partirana, University of Sydney. New Ears, RPA Institute of Academic Surgery, University of Wollongong, and Chris O'Brien Lifehouse. David? And the winner of the 2022 Eureka Prize for Excellence in Interdisciplinary Scientific Research is... Professor Manfred Lenson, <laughs> Professor David Raumberma, Dr. Aram Nima Malik, Dr. Menju Lee, and Navoda Liana Patriana. Well done. Congratulations, everyone. And I think Aranima is going to speak on behalf of the team. Well, um, thank you. So I speak on behalf of the team, Professor Manfred Lenzen, who couldn't be here um, today with us, uh, Professor David Rumenheimer, uh, Dr. Mengyu Lee, and Navoda Liana Pathurana. Uh, we would like to thank the Australian Museum uh, for recognising the importance of interdisciplinary research in solving the world's pressing uh, problems. We would also like to thank the University of Sydney for fostering a culture where different disciplines can really come together to solve uh, interdisciplinary problems. And uh, it really is a, truly a, a, an interdisciplinary team effort, so thank you. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Well done, team, and thank you very much, David Armstrong, and congratulations on all that you've done for the Australian Museum. And that's it for our prizes this evening. We've got time for one last check-in with our panel. So, Ray and Chris, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I know way too much about Nemo now, so <laughs> thanks very much for that. We all that. do, yeah. I will have nightmares, <laughs> intrusive thoughts, all of those sorts of things. Just focus on the sharks <laughs> exhibition with those life-size sharks. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and I also believe that a group of researchers is called a collaboration, which <gasps> on a cheesy Ooh. note is something that we have seen a lot of tonight mm, and totally. it does warm my heart. And yeah, I'm a firm believer in the fact that if we share our knowledge with each other, we can solve many of the problems that we're facing in this world. And That's how these science projects get done, almost absolutely. all of them that we've seen tonight. And speaking of solving problems, uh, we do need to call out national treasure, Dr. Vina Sahajwala, <laughs> uh, who is the person that I think about when, 
you, you think of the problems that we're facing in the world, you think about who's coming up with solutions and communicating those solutions with an enthusiasm that makes us all excited and Absolutely. on board for what she does. Yeah, no, I think about the Eureka Prizes are recognizing science, technology, and invention. And uh, Vina is one of the, the true inventors mm -hmm. with us here tonight. Green steel, yeah. got turning waste from communities. Have you seen these into products that she produces? I've held them in my hands. Yeah, they are amazing. It's so cool. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> and also a, a, an acknowledgement to, to Justin Yerbury tonight. Uh, Absolutely. Fantastic to, uh, to, to see him breaking down so many barriers. So inspiring, incredible that he's pursuing the science that he is um, in, uh, living with motor neuron disease. Absolutely, and a staunch advocate as well for getting more people with disabilities into academia where there are a lot of barriers in place. That's right. Now, I know we're going to go to the tweets, and I've yeah. seen a lot of university partners <laughs> and university uh, winners tonight tweeting, and I just want to remind anyone from the university world that we want to see the nominations flowing in every year yeah. from all around the country. Everybody, I want you to be inspired by the evening and to get your best nominations and submissions in. And we have had so many congratulations coming through on the tweets. I will not read them all to you, but I will <laughs> give you an update on uh, at Jenny underscore, underscore STEM, Jenny Martin, who is watching from France. Uh, who says that she'd like us to all have a great time at the Eureka Prizes, but she is loving the food over there. So <laughs> thanks, Jenny. <laughs> thanks, Jenny. And thanks, Bernie, for being such a wonderful host uh, this evening. Absolute pleasure. Thank you guys for bringing the, uh, the vitality and the joy from the online world to us here, as well as giving us your blow-by-blow -blow descriptions of what's been going on. You could be sports commentators anyway if you weren't that talented in your Not day jobs. Happen. No. Thanks, Bernie. <laughs> okay, Pick sign. Pick sport sport commentators. Sport, Terrific. Let's it. give it up for Chris <laughs> and Ray. And thank you everyone who's joined in the online conversation on um, social media. Hashtag Eureka Prizes. It's been great to have your involvement. Um, that is the conclusion for the formal part of our show tonight. It has been an absolute pleasure being your host. I just want to give one more huge round of congratulations to the winners, runners up and finalists. Let's give it to them. <laughs> And thank every one of you who's been with us, whether it's Jenny Martin bragging about the food in the south of France, or whether it's you here in the room facing the public transport drag that was today in New South Wales. Um, it's just been so great to have you all here, to have your support, and to celebrate the achievements of our brilliant scientists, leaders, and communicators. Now, for those of you joining online, I'm afraid this really is good night. It's been so great to have your company. This is where we'll leave you. You know, go and get into the full tracky DAC ensemble. You're very welcome. Have a nightcap and just reflect on all the joy and wonder that is science in Australia. Thanks very much. We'll see you next year.